Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Era Safira binti Sahril. My supervisor is Teknologis Dr. Noraini binti Marsi. My final year project title is The Study of Characterization of Eco-Friendly Geotextile Based on Low Density Polyethylene LDPE Plastic Bag Waste. The study presents the utilization of plastic bag waste reinforced geotextile. The objective of this research is to determine the optimum layer of low-density polyethylene plastic bag waste to produce geotextile. The study is involved the different layers of LDPE plastic bag waste which are 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12 layers by using a hot press process with 120 degrees Celsius and 140 degrees Celsius. LDPE plastic bag waste were cut with dimensions of 270mm x 400mm. Then the samples were cut into pieces to evaluate their physical and mechanical properties. For a physical properties test, samples shows that the neutral group is identified as sample of 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste after heat treatments of 120 degrees Celsius. The 12 layers of LDP plastic bag waste that undergo 140 degrees Celsius has highest thickness of 0.3712 mm. The roughest surface was found on 12 layers of LDP plastic bag waste that undergo 120 degrees Celsius in, in optical microscopy test. For the mechanical properties test, the 10 layers of LDP plastic bag waste that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius withstood the highest elongation at break at 490.02 mm and highest percentage strain at break at 653.36. The 12 layers of LDP plastic bag waste that undergo 120 degrees Celsius has highest burst strain test with 8.55 kgf. The 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste that undergo 140 degrees Celsius has highest coefficient of friction with 0.585. In a nutshell, the study found that 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius are suitable for eco-friendly geotextile. Plastics are made of polymer. It is an ideal material for a wide range of applications because of their quality, strength, and lightweight. Some applications of plastic are for packaging, medical devices, construction, and transportation. Nowadays, plastic developments are growing which leads to the increasing in plastic pollution and environmental problems. But, this problem can be solved by transforming the plastic bag waste into geotextile. Geotextile is a synthetic textile permeable material that enhances soil characteristic. It has the ability to separate, absorb, stabilize, secure, and drain when used in conjunction with soils. Geotextile is widely used in construction and landscape. So, this study focuses on the characterization of eco-friendly geotextile used in landscape application. In 2019, a studies found in Rosted reports that 31 kg of plastic waste is produced manually per person across the Europe, adding up to a total of 15.8 million tons. In 2019, also a research found that accounting to the 55% of the 7.5 million tons of plastic waste that was imported by the United States, Japan and Britain to Malaysia in the first 7 months in 2018. However, only 9% of this plastic waste is pure plastic, which can be recycled, while the remaining 12% of the plastic waste is initiated and 75% is disposed of in landfills or discarded in the natural world. In 2011, there are two types of geotextile, natural geotextile and synthetic geotextile. Synthetic geotextile are made of polymers such as polyethylene, polypropylene, polyester, and polyamide. The raw material for its production are hydrocarbon, petrochemicals, and foils, and fossils. In this study, the LDPE plastic bag waste were brought from the same material which are bought from the same shop at Pekan Pago, Johor. In the first phase of plastic bag waste preparation, 
it is important to ensure the LDP plastic bag waste is clean from all other substances such as oil and detergent liquid. It is in order to prevent all default when conducting sample of geotextile. The plastic bag waste then were cut using scissors and then proceed to the cleaning process to confirm the dry condition. LDPE plastic bag waste then been fold to the dimensions of 270mm width times 400mm length. Then, the plastic bag waste is put on the heat transfer machine. The cover sheet is placed before the heat transfer process begins. The heat transfer machine was set into 120 degrees Celsius, then the heat transfer process starts. After a few seconds, the sample is done. This process is repeated for other different layers of LDPE plastic bag waste and the heat transfer temperature. Tensile strength test was conducted according to standard ASTM D5035. This test method covers cut strip test procedures for determine the elongation and strength of breaking. The sample is clamped in a tensile testing machine and a force applied to the sample until it breaks. Value for the breaking force and elongation of the test sample are obtained from computer interface with the testing machine. Figures shows the graph elongation at break versus layers of LDPE plastic bag waste. The graph shows for samples that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius, 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste withstood the highest elongation at break at 490.02 mm, followed by 8 layers with 438.57 mm. They are sharply dropped in tensile strength by 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste that undergo 100 and 20 degrees Celsius with 291.57 mm, it is because the bond of each layer was not fully attached. For samples that undergo 140 degrees Celsius at layers of LDP plastic bag waste, we stood the highest elongation at break with 70.02 mm, followed by 6 layers at 61.82. Next, the the graph shows that the elongation at break versus layer of LDPE plastic bag waste. The graph shows for sample that undergo 120 degrees Celsius, 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste, we stood the highest percentage strength at break at 653.36, followed by 8 layers with 584.76. They are sharply dropped in percentage strength at break at 12 layer of LDPE plastic bag waste that undergo 120 degrees Celsius with 388.76 because the bond of each LDPE layers was not fully attached. For samples that undergo 140 degrees Celsius, 8 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste withstood the highest percentage strength at break with 93.36 followed by 6 layers at 82.43. The coefficient of friction test was conducted according to standard ASTM D3786. The surface to be tested are placed together in plain contact and under uniform contact pressure. The force needed to displace the surface relative to each other is recorded. From the graph, the sample that undergo 140 degrees Celsius, the 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste withstood the highest burst coefficient. The highest coefficient of friction with 0.584 followed by 10 layers with 0.577. For the samples that undergo 120 degrees Celsius, 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste, we stood the highest coefficient of friction with 0.213 followed by 10 layers with 0.209. The burst test was conducted according to standard ASTM D3786 which the sample is securely, claims firmly and uniformly between two annular, plain, parallel and preferable stainless steel surface without slippage during the test. A sufficient 
pressure is used to affect the practicable minimization of slippage. The graph shows the sample that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius, 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste which stood the highest burst strength with 8.55 kgf, followed by 10 layers with 7.71 kgf. For the samples that undergo 140 degrees Celsius, 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste which stood the highest burst strength with 7.06 kgf, followed by 10 layers with 6.63 kgf. The thickness test was conducted according to standard ASTM D5199. The thickness of geotextile is determined by observing the distance between two parallel surfaces confining the tested material while under a specific pressure after 5 seconds. From the graph, the samples that undergo 140 degrees Celsius, 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste is the highest thickness has the highest thickness with 0.371 mm, followed by 10 layers of 0.3038 mm. For the samples that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius, 12 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste, which stood the highest coefficient, the highest thickness with 0.2926, followed by 10 layers with 0.2926 mm. For FTIR analysis, this practice covers the spectral spectrum from 4,000 to 50% meter wave and involves techniques that are useful for qualitative analysis of liquid, solid and vapor phase samples by infrared spectrometry techniques for which the amount of sample available for analysis is not a limiting factor. These techniques are also useful for recording spectra at frequencies above 4,000 per centimeter wavelength in the near infrared region. The graph presents the infrared absorption spectra of untreated 1 layer and 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste after heat treatment of 120 degrees Celsius. There are two main regions characterized of this group can be identified. The first one occurs at peak 2 at 40 to 2915 per centimeter are assigned to the CH stretching and the second region is represented by well-defined peaks at 2330 until 2360 per centimeter wavelength is corresponded to CN stretching. The alkane group is identified by medium absorption band at 2514 per centimeter on both samples, while natural group is identified by weak, weak, weak absorption band at 2357 per centimeter at sample of 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste after heat treatments of 120 degrees Celsius. In OM analysis, the geotextile samples were conducted with 10 times image magnifications. It was to determine the metric reinforcement bonding and external surface for each geotextile sample. Based on the pattern that obtained on surface of sample by using optical microscopy, they are clearly shown that 140 degrees Celsius samples has rough surface while the 120 degree samples has smooth surface. A rough surface geotextile is an element to be considered in determine, to determine the suitability for use on slope defense surface to promote bonding to base, oil, base soils and resistant to rock sliding. In conclusion, the objective of this study are achieved. Mechanical and physical tests were performed and analyzed on the basis of various layers of the LDPE plastic bag waste. The optimum layer of 10 layers of LDPE plastic bag waste that undergoes 120 degrees Celsius heat transfer process are suitable in horticulture application. So that's all for me. Thank you.